Let's bring back our panel of talk radio hosts. Barack Lurie hosts the Barack Lurie Show on AM 870 Los Angeles. Wendy Patrick hosts Today with Dr. Wendy on KCBQ Radio, The Answer out of San Diego. And Chris Arps from the Tim Jones and Chris Arps Show on News Talk 101.9 and 94.1 St. Louis. Barack, this just, I can't even put this into words. Like, according to the nonprofit American Family Association, those who do not affirm these LGBTQ rules, this pronoun nonsense because of their Christian faith are called unsafe by the Biden administration. They'll be rejected as foster parent candidates. Like, I don't have words for that. That's a war on religion, is it not? It, it is. And how appropriate it is that you raise this story during Hanukkah time, which is all about how the Jews fought back against the Greeks who were trying to demand, <clears throat> excuse me, that the Jews uh, worship their gods. And that's exactly what's happening here. They want uh, Christians, in this case, to worship the gods <clears throat> of the LGBT community. I'm so sorry about right. my cough. <clears throat> and that's what's happening. So we expect this. It makes me so outraged that this is actually even on the table whatsoever. There will be lawsuits about this. I'm comfortable about that. Mm -hmm. I do know that this is a First Amendment uh, violation to the extreme. And then, of course, think about the slippery slope of this. The fact right. is that if they can do this and they somehow force Christians to somehow vow to, uh, to, to agree with whatever the administration wants on this particular issue, then why not do the same thing for churches, generally speaking, and uh, otherwise threaten to pull their 501c3 status yeah. and otherwise uh, you know, take down all sorts of uh, issues of worship? Look, we're living in a time now where they're actually uh, making sure not to light Christmas trees, uh, not to light uh, uh, menorahs at this point, Hanukkahs. Uh, because of the danger, supposedly, that these people face. This is a way of undermining Christianity and Judaism at the same time, yeah. uh, right. and ultimately Western civilization. Very scary. I, I, I agree with you. And, and Chris, attorneys general, as I alluded, from nearly two dozen states, they're pushing back lawsuit, uh, arguing the woke mandate completely tramples the foster parents' First Amendment rights, as Barack alluded. Beyond that, I mean, like, shouldn't we be talking about the nearly 400,000 foster children in this country? I mean, let's get some good foster parents. This woke garbage is exactly what it sets out to be, destructive. Yeah. You know, the progressive left and the Democrats are always talking about conservatives and Republicans are fomenting a culture war. But if you look at it, they're the ones that are really doing the fomenting a culture war with moves like this, um, with the Pentagon wanting soldiers to travel across borders to be able to get um, abortions. They are really out of step with, with where the American people are. And I think, as the previous guest said, that this is really a slippery slope of trying to uh, unlegalize, in a sense, Christianity. We've seen examples on, in, uh, in Great Britain and in Europe where if you talk about uh, anti-homosexuality in the pulpit, um, you could be accused of breaking speech codes. And I think if this is able to uh, muster constitutional uh, muster, then I think what we see over in Europe and those extreme uh, tactics will be coming to this country next. Right on. Right on. And, Wendy, it seems Democrats want to destroy the family and the American dream. I mean, never in recent history has it been this unaffordable to buy a house, you guys. I mean, out-of-control spending, inflation, rate hikes, boom, life becomes uh, unaffordable. I mean, this, is, this has got to be the plan, right, Wendy? You know, I have never seen malls so sparsely populated as I have this year. And it's not the case that everybody's waiting until the last minute or that they're making all these purchases on Amazon. We have, like none other time before, at least within the last, just definitely within the last administration, we were all doing a lot better, seen this real false choice between heating and eating. That became a buzzword over the summer. We never thought it would become mm. the reality that it has in just a few short months. It is outrageous yes. how much people have to have to have a roof over their head. Go figure. I agree 100%. And so this new liberal world order, I talk about it all the time on my show. I know you guys do. I mean, it means co-opting our freedom of speech and weaponizing our freedom to assemble. Barack, criminalizing our right to petition the government and now trampling our freedom of religion. Like, I'm just going to say this. This government is trying to destroy America from within. How can you look at it any other way? There is no other way to look at it. And thank God for the United States Constitution, because it really does set in stone uh, our right to uh, own and, and bear gar arms, and then, of course, uh, for the speech. Uh, and, and it's precisely that, that it will protect us. Look what's happening in Europe. I think uh, uh, Wendy uh, or uh, Tim actually, Chris actually alluded to it. 
when there is no constitution, then they just go by whatever feels right and whatever the mood of the mob is at the time. And with our constitution, there's just a, a very straight northern star that we uh, set our sails to, and we go there all the time, and there's just no getting around it. So that's wonderful for Christians and Jews alike, and of course, for people who love to bear arms, that that's the way it should be, and for Americans in general. I think we're right safe on. as long as we maintain the United States Constitution, uh, and as long as we protect it and, and treasure it. Um, that, that is yeah. uh, some hope that I have. Amen. Yeah, I do. I agree. Chris, I'm going to leave you with this. You have the last say here. You know who's catching on to all this madness? It's exciting to see. It's Generation Z. This is America's youngest voters. Many of them were in college during COVID. They suffered from the crazy firsthand. Also, the 80 million voters who didn't vote in 2020, they see where this country is growing, is going. And I don't know, Chris, as bad as this is, I think I see positive things going on out there. Do you? Well, I'll tell you another positive thing that I see. A poll came out this week that showed that if the election was held today, 20 percent of African-Americans would vote for uh, Donald Trump. So uh, that's something to contemplate uh, for this upcoming election year. Yeah, absolutely. You've got the Hispanic support. You've got the African-American vote coming in now, a double, you know, 20, 20 points. That's huge. You guys, thank you so very much for your time today.